I often find the stories of a film's production to be just as interesting as the film itself. Such is the case with The Exorcist, a film which would go on to redefine horror filmmaking, influence hundreds if not thousands of subsequent films both in and out of the horror genre, and would prove to be one of the most successful films of all time. But let's take a step back to 1971. William Peter Blotty had just published a novel, details were changed. It's based on the allegedly real story of Ronald Doe, a 14-year-old boy who was allegedly possessed. The story goes that furniture would move, bases would fly around the room, he would speak in tongues. Irabili dig do, don't you agree? Words appeared carved into his chest. All this happened, the bed shook, and the boy finagled his way out of his restraints to attack the priest. Now, this is a fascinating story, and made for an excellent book, one the selling list for over a year. Now, naturally, Hollywood wanted to capitalize on this, be huge, and were willing to invest a lot of money into it. However, trouble started to arise once casting began. Friedkin wanted to use a cast made up of mostly unknown actors, or at least unknown to an American audience. In the United States, the problems only continued. First, the film faced quite a bit of backlash from religion for her. Let that sink in for a minute. A 14-year-old. Things were so bad on set that the story goes that Friedkin hired a real priest to perform an exorcism on the set. Unfortunately, the film's exorcisms proved to be more successful than the real one, and things continued. And I ain't that devil. Now kindly undo these straps. Originally, it was going to be Blair, but Friedkin felt that it would be best to create a separate voice entirely, have this be two separate entities. She said, I should swallow raw eggs. I should smoke cigarettes constantly. You gotta give me some booze, which is gonna make me nuts and I'm getting off the wagon to do this. During scenes like this where characters fly, <laughs> and yes, again, that is her real scream. The breath that can be seen in Regan's room is real. The set was built into a freezer and lowered to below freezing temperatures to capture the breath on the air. He would randomly fire blanks into the air to get authentic looks of shock and fear on the actor's played Father Dyer right before this take and told Jason Miller that the fake vomit was going to hit him in the chest instead of, well, in the face. So what was the point of going to just to carve words into his chest for attention? And it made a fascinating story, one that was just wild enough that if you believed in possession, it could be believable. And Friedkin tried to take this impossible and make it real. He put his actors through literal hell and the result was a film that feels like the characters are being dragged through hell. There's a reason that 45 years later, The Exorcist is just as scary as the day it was released. And that's because not only does it feel real, it is real. Or take this from the opening scene. After Father Marin discovers the statue of Pazuzu, he takes this ominous looking capsule out of his pocket, only for it to be revealed to be a tin of mints. Here's my interpretation of what Friedkin did here. He's on our guard of what is real and what isn't, and he doesn't let us hide behind the excuse of it's just a movie, because although Ronald Doe was never possessed, The Exorcist is more than just a movie. It totally zombied me out. Yeah. I couldn't believe this. It was so believable. Though. Yeah. So this video was made possible because of Patreon. I'm trying to make my content the best that it can be, and trying new things is definitely going to be a part of that. 